Hey guys, Matt here from TechRate Reviews, and for the last 7 months I've been running CyanogenMod 12 on my phone. For the most part it's been nightly builds, however for the last couple of weeks I have been running a snapshot build, and while I initially encountered some pretty major bugs when I first installed it, ever since then CyanogenMod has done a great job of pushing out a ton of updates, and the phone seems to be running really smoothly and I almost never experience any crashes anymore. The main reason I initially installed CyanogenMod was to get rid of the terrible LG software on my phone and get a near stock Android experience, and I think CyanogenMod has done a great job of delivering that while adding in some legitimately useful features that don't seem like bloatware or features they just added for the sake of adding them. If you're thinking about installing CyanogenMod, I think the main reason you should is simply the great visual design and speed of the operating system. Since it is based on stock Android as I mentioned before, that means you get all of Google's great material design and animations all throughout the operating system. For me, they all run flawlessly and they run super fast even though my phone is slightly older. For reference, I'm running an LG G2 in case any of you were wondering. But like I said, I never experienced any lag on it. All the animations look great no matter what app I'm using. I've just really never experienced any slowdowns in this operating system. I'm going to talk more about speed and performance later, but right now I want to keep focusing on the visual design of the operating system. And one of the best parts about it is the fact that you can install hundreds of themes from the CyanogenMod theme store, or just find them online or on Google Play. And what this allows you to do is completely customize every single aspect of your phone and make it completely unique to you. Personally, some of my favorites are Mind and Zeeks. I'm not really sure how to say that second one, but there will be links to both of them down below in the description. And the Mind one is simply a bit more unique version of stock Android and has some more colorful accents and just makes Google's material design pop a little more. And then Zeke's goes the other way and is much more minimal and has more subtle accents and a slightly darker overall feel. And I really like both of these, however often I combine aspects of both of them. For instance I have the font from the Mind icon pack and then I use the Moonshine icon pack off Google Play. By using all these different elements I'm able to create an operating system that looks exactly how I want it and functions how I want and I don't really have to choose between one or the other and I can just have it exactly how I want. In terms of performance, I've really had nothing but a great experience. I know benchmarks aren't really the best way to measure a phone's performance anymore, but just for reference, I got over 39,000 on Antutu, and that's higher than the LG G3, the Nexus 5, and it almost beats the Samsung Galaxy S5, and those phones are all up to a year newer than my phone, which once again is the LG G2. But in real world, everything's really fast, like I said, the animations run super smoothly, I can play high-end games without any problem, and the phone does get slightly hot, but I think that's just the LG G2 and doesn't really have much to do with CyanogenMod. And that's all in balance mode, if you want to sacrifice some battery life for extra performance, you can turn on performance mode, or vice versa where you sacrifice a little performance for extra battery, and those are all built into CyanogenMod and they both work really great. Another thing about CyanogenMod is it does a fantastic job of managing your system resources. I never worry about clearing out my old apps from the recent app menu, and it just seems to always have enough RAM to run whatever app I want to run right now. However, if you do like to close your apps out pretty frequently, you'll love that CyanogenMod added in a clear all button so you can clear all of your apps out in a single tap instead of swiping back and forth to clear out 20 or 30 apps at a single time. Battery life is definitely something that varies greatly from phone to phone, but when I was running the stock LG software on here, I was getting 2, maybe 2.5 two hours of screen on time, but now with CyanogenMod, I'm getting around 3 to 3.5 three and, and sometimes even 4 on really good days, so that is a definite improvement. Once again, this really varies depending on your device, but for me, I did see a big improvement, and that's once again using the phone in balance mode. If you want to get even more battery life out of it, CyanogenMod's power saver mode is really great, and it seems to turn the standby battery usage down to almost 0%, and I can get a lot of usage out of it that way, although it does turn off a lot of features and reduce your performance. Some other features I want to talk about just since I found them really useful, and it really improved my experience of using the phone. One of them is trusted devices, so if you have a smartwatch like me, 
or just some other trusted Bluetooth device, maybe in your car or in your room or even a Wi-Fi network, you can set your phone to not require a password when you're connected to that. So if I'm within range of my watch, I can simply swipe open my phone and don't need to use a password. But then if I take my watch off or my phone moves too far away, I need to put in my normal password and it won't open it unless I put on the watch again or put in my correct password. Another feature I also really enjoyed is called live display. And at night, the blue light from your phone screen can actually keep you up for a while. So if you use this built-in feature, it will reduce the amount of blue light emitted from your phone. So when you're going to bed, you don't have to worry about the extra eye strain. And it does a really good job of knowing when to turn it on and when to leave it off. Another feature a lot of you will appreciate is called Privacy Guard. And it's similar to what Google released in Android 4.3 called App Ops, except they later removed it. However, CyanogenMod keeps that included. And it basically lets you control what features specific apps can access on your phone. So when you download an app and agree to accept all of those permissions, here you can actually disable some of those so you don't have to give your apps access to your photo gallery, microphone, and location unless you specifically say that you want to. While I've said a ton of great things about CyanogenMod so far, I've definitely also had my fair share of problems with it. Some of these are really small and were easily fixable, however others were more significant and it took me a really long time to get my phone working again. But keep in mind, if you install CyanogenMod, you may have none of these problems, or you may have some of them. It could be specific to my device, or it could just be some flaw in CyanogenMod. However, most of them are fixed now, so I will say they are great at doing updates. But these are just some of the problems I experienced while using CyanogenMod over the last seven months. Probably the most annoying of these is auto rotation didn't work on my phone for about the first four months. Whenever I tried to rotate my phone to landscape to watch a video on YouTube or something, nothing happened at all. And since so many apps rely on this, especially games, it was a pretty big inconvenience. However, it does seem to be working now. And if it ever stops working like it does every couple weeks, I just have to reboot my phone and then everything's back to normal. But that was a pretty big annoyance when it was happening. This second problem should be a huge reminder of why you always want to keep backups off of your phone in case you ever do anything where you lose all of your data. In my case, I was trying to encrypt my phone and about halfway through it failed and I got a message saying encryption unsuccessful. You'll have to reset your phone before you can use it again. And this turned into a much bigger problem for me as I wasn't able to just go into recovery and flash a backup as all of those were corrupted and I couldn't even get into my recovery, so I actually had to completely reset my phone back to what it was from the factory, and then go through the whole process of installing CyanogenMod again. And everything's working fine, however my phone is still not encrypted, but it just should be a huge reminder of always keep backups of your phone, and ideally back them up to the cloud or a secondary computer. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I was running nightly builds when I experienced most of these problems, so I really shouldn't be too upset as the software is still in development and there are meant to be bugs that have to be fixed. But for the first six months, there was only nightly builds if I want to be on Lollipop. And for me, those problems and bugs I experienced were worth getting the great visual design and just nice look of stock Android. So if you need to use your phone and have it be super reliable, I'd recommend waiting till a milestone or snapshot release comes out or just be willing to have to fix these problems like I did. So far in this video, I've talked a lot about both the pro and cons of installing CyanogenMod, and you're probably still on the edge of whether or not you should install it. Personally, for me, it was definitely worth it. The software on my LG G2 was really bad and I just hated using it. And with CyanogenMod, I really enjoy using my phone again. It's just that much better than the old operating system. So personally, for me, it was worth the risk of potentially damaging my phone in some way. However, if you rely on your phone and can't afford to break it, I probably wouldn't recommend doing this until either you are very sure that you know how to fix your phone, or the CyanogenMod installer comes out and makes the whole process a lot easier. But if you do decide to do it and run into any problems, I recommend checking out YouTube and XDA forums if you experience any problems as they have helped me so much. And I'll leave a link to that channel that helped me out both installing CyanogenMod and when I had to figure out how to restore my phone back to its factory condition. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know I don't normally review software this in depth, but I really do enjoy using CyanogenMod and I think you will too if you use it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.